Hi, and welcome to episode 106 of the Heartland Knits podcast. My name is Vicki, but you can find me as Heartland Knits on Ravelry and Instagram. And today is Sunday, May 10th, 2015. I have a brand new project to show you this week, so I'm going to just jump right in with what's been on my needles because it's nice to have a new cast on, you know? So I showed this, I think for a couple of weeks, um, some hand spun yarn that I had wanted to start knitting and I started and the, um, the fiber came from Lusa Susa. It's baby alpaca and silk top, 70% um, alpaca, 30% silk, and the co color was called Water Gardens. And I'll just lift this up. I have this on my little yarn buddy from Sun Valley Fibers. So this is the yarn I'm using. And I, I finally decided on the shawl that I wanted to knit from it. And it was one that I showed you um, last week that was imaginating and that is the Spellbound by Boo Knits. and I'll try to hold this up so that you can see the leaves on it um, and you can also hopefully see the color kind of variations it's a really um, kind of gray day so I think the color looks better back here, but so it's it ranges from sort of a yellowy green to more of a blue green. I love I love the yarn. Um, it is hand spun, but I just it's so soft, and I think it's going to make a really nice um, kind of drapey shawl. Um, I am at the point. So this is one of the Boonitz shawls. Um, does anybody know her real name? <laughs> um, it doesn't say anywhere um, what her actual name is. And I know last year at knitting camp, I kind of showed all my shawls and there were a couple that were boonets. And I didn't know what her real name was. So if you know, let me know. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure I will probably show this at camp. And it would be nice to have her actual name. But... Um, it's got, oh there, you can see the leaves in it, which I really love with this green yarn. And it's an all over um, lace pattern. And then at the bottom, it will have a fancy edge like most of her shawls do. Um, and then the beads will be added on the edge. Um, I'm at the point where I, had, I think I have one more repeat if I'm gonna follow the pattern strictly. Uh, one more of this pattern repeat before starting the edge but I think I have a lot of yarn um, I have over the yardage that um, called for in the pattern so I am going to extend it out at least one more repeat um, of this um, before starting the edge one extra repeat so I'll be doing two more repeats and um, you know it's it's basically just just following the pattern um, I I'm working this it's a lace weight yarn I'm working this on size 5 needles um, which are 3.75 millimeters and um, yeah it's been it was it's been nice to pick up a little bit of lace knitting and have some lace lace in my life um, the I, I love how this stitch pattern looks when it's when it's um done I love like how the leaves pop out it's not my favorite stitch pattern to actually knit not for any it just doesn't have kind of like a nice rhythm to it but I love the finished effect so that's all right um, but that is my new cast on and then I have made I think considerable progress on my other project which is my egg bohus. It's got like a lot of a lot of things attached to it. Here is here is my egg. Um, and this is a kit from Sweden, um, dyed by Solve Gustafsson. And I last week I had about two inches of the sleeve done. 
and I am almost to the end. I had a little bit farther than this. Um, I, I did, if you'll notice, I did take out, I had this sleeve about three quarters of the way done last week and I did end up taking it out because I like how this one is working out much, much better. Um, so if I can have another knitting week on this, like I did last week, I should have both sleeves like nearly done. So this is just stacking it until I got down to the cuff. And this is the start of the lace pattern um, for the cuff. So I ran into a bit of a hiccup when I got down to the cuff because uh, the stitch pattern, this is the same stitch pattern that I used for the bottom. And it's quite a wide um, repeat. So when I came to, to measuring how many repeats to do for my wrist, it didn't come out quite even. Like one would be too small and the next size, adding an extra repeat would be way too big. So I thought about um, kind of just narrowing it down a little bit and so that I would have a smaller amount of stitches. And I tried that. I had about an inch and a half done or so. And I took a good look at it last night and just, it it's a, it's a four row re repeat. And it just, that made it a three row repeat. And it just did not, it's such a small gauge. It just didn't kind of show up. It just didn't really seem worth it. So then I thought, well, what else could I do to make it a little bit smaller? And I thought, well, I'll do the, the kind of old school thing that you kind of always used to do when you were doing ribbing is go down needle sizes. So I put on um, the, the larger stitch repeat. If I, if I um, used the same needles I had used for the stockinette, it would have come out way too wide. And so I went down a smaller needles. Um, so we'll see. I've only got about half an inch kind of done so I'll see how that works but I think that might be the way to go um, so one sleeve done that it just feels like huge so as long as this works out I'll start knitting the other sleeve and then I just have one of the button bands or a, the actual buttonhole band and the neck band and this project will be done I'll be happy. Um, it it was, you know, actually quite pleasant to knit this this uh, stockinette. I'm doing the stockinette on size zero needles, and I just switched down to size. Um, did I say size zero? I, I'm doing the stockinette on size one needles, and I switched down to um, size zero needles for the uh, lace cuff. So. Those were the two projects that I worked on kind of all week. So for off the needles, I don't have anything newly finished, but I am wearing something that I wore. So I will, this is the Making Waves cardigan by Mary Honorella that I knit two years ago. It's made out of Madeline Tosh um, Merino Light, and I can't remember the color. I think it had had something to do with afternoon, like afternoon tea or afternoon, Sunday afternoon. Or I just, I kind of think that it had afternoon in the name of it. But it's this kind of peachy pink. I um, I knit it saying, you know, I really loved the color. I knew, think it was going to look very good on me. And, I, and I, I haven't really worn it very much because it's kind of a, it's it's such a kind of pale um, peach. It's got a lot of pink in it too. But then I bought this floral dress this spring and it matches it perfectly. So I guess if you just buy things that you love, eventually they all go together. So I don't really have any imagining, but I thought I would just give you a little garden update. Um, I showed you the little tour um, 
last week and I would go out there again, but it's super windy and it would not, it would not be good, good uh, time to uh, be trying to take a video out there. Um, but I did get the rest of the garden, um, the back garden, like all like prepared and, and found that I had a fair amount of things that came back on that garden. So that was good. And I happily um, found the exact same variety of yellow rose that I'd gotten the year before, um, last year, that had kind of gotten trampled when they came to take the, the old power pole out. Um, so I was really excited. It's a really pretty yellow rose. It's called, the variety is called Sun Sprite. And um, I'm sure it would have survived if it had been trampled on. <laughs> but, so I yesterday I got that all prepared and I got it planted because I knew we were maybe going to have rain um, overnight and like tomorrow night. So um, I wanted to get it in the ground. So I was so happy. It's a really nice, healthy one. Um, I had a lot of leaves growing on it already and stuff. And then I put little forget-me-nots kind of in front of it. So that was good. Um, I, I um, you know, planted a few more things, a few more perennials out there. I've been trying to be very kind of methodical this year about buying plants um, and just buying one's kind of for like one area or and then getting them planted right away so it, it, yeah last week was beautiful temperatures in the 70s it was like 80 and and um really beautiful um so i bought and planted all the flowers for the window box and the big kind of um kind of urn that sits out by the garage so I got that all done so um, and then I've been trying to get um, perennial I put the like the pink perennials in to kind of replace the ones that um, didn't make it through the winter I'm still looking for roses to um, put over there and I think I'm going to put one more rose in the back um, garden so if you have um, kind of varieties that you really like I don't I don't really want to do hybrid teas. They're beautiful, but I know I'm not going to do all the dusting and spraying and all of stuff that you really have to do for hybrid teas. Um, the yellow one that I put in is a, um, a floribunda, and it's a week's rose, so they were grown. <clears throat> it has to be able to survive zone four <laughs> um, up here. So... Um, but I would love to hear um, what you have, um, ones that you love. Um, I want pink ones for the pink garden, but the other one, I'm not sure what I want to put in there. Um, like just something pretty. Um, and um, let's see, what else? All my little lettuce seedlings came up, and I planted some little, um, they're already started, little butter crunch lettuces um, too. So... They have a little cage around them because the bunnies like that stuff too, but I want to eat it. So um, I put all the pansies in front of them, so um, no sign of the sweet peas yet, so I'm still hoping to be able to, to get a batch of those going. Um, I know they do um, have little kind of seedling started ones that I can buy but it's better it's more fun if you can get them to come from seed um, so no no decision about the uh, corner the little messy corner that I showed you but the, oh the other the, um, the big thing that I'm hoping doesn't happen I, I put a picture of this up on Instagram and the usually see behind the pink garden there's a fence well, that's the neighbor's fence. They have a pool, so they have to have a fence around it. And I got up one day, and it was decidedly leaning, leaning towards my yard. Um, it looks like it's going to collapse onto the garden any second. Um, so I was hoping that this weekend he would get around to working on it, because they do have they have to have a fence up because they have a pool 
Um, but, and it's been, it's been repaired, um, uh, uh, several times. Um, I know it was built, I want to say like 97 or 98. So it's, it's, it's up there. But, um, so I came home from, from church today and I kind of looked at it when I was coming around the corner and it looked like it had been pushed back and there's all kinds of cars on the street a lot of times that I, they have um, like parties for their family and I thought oh well maybe he was just waiting for like a brother or his dad or whatever to come and help and maybe they it looks like they fixed it so by the time I got in the house and I looked out it was leaning again and it's just that it's so windy it's going back and forth <laughs> I know it's gonna flatten the the uh the garden. I didn't even want to really go over there by it yesterday because I don't want to be like over there when it comes down because I don't want to get flattened by the, by the fence. So hopefully that'll be good. They'll get it fixed and it'll all be good. But um, it's been really nice to have. It, it is an early spring, I've decided, because I picked lilacs yesterday and I know two years ago they didn't bloom till the 22nd so it it decidedly is um, early and the, the uh, road out to the little flower farm um, it's just kind of outside you know town um, that is all lined with cherry trees I took a video um, so Oh, maybe we'll see if I could get that in and put that in here. And I also took one in, like in the um, the uh, geranium house because it just the colors were just exploding in there. So we'll see about putting those in. Um, but I be, do have a fair amount of show and tell to show you. I bought some yarn. Um, I went to the yarn shop one day, um, mostly to get a needle for um, to to finish up my the second of my twined mitten. Um, remember, I made um, one twine mitten this winter, and my Addy Lace needle kind of made one side of it. I was doing it with two cirques, and the Addy Lace kind of made it tarnish um, on the, ones, the, the palm side of it. So before I wanted to do the second mitten, I was going to get another needle, another high high up. So I just had never gotten around to getting near a yard shop and I thought, okay, I'm going to go and get that because I was thinking about, um, I have the bohus, I've got the lace and I thought, well, I could, I want to get like a mitten on, on the needles. You know, I'm thinking about doing, I know I don't do very many knit alongs, but I was considering, I have a bunch of mittens that I want to knit this summer. And so I was thinking about doing a mitten knit along this summer. So if you would be interested in that, write in the thread and let me know because if nobody else is interested in knitting mittens, I don't really need to hold a, a knit along for it. Um, but um, let me know if you'd be interested. Maybe we'll do something. So anyway, I went to the yarn shop because I wanted to get the, the the second twine mitten on the needles, 
and was just kind of looking around and saw something. I've I've been seeing these on Instagram for a while now, and I, they're really they're really pretty. But I knew that they were, um, or I'd heard um, people like talking on Instagram and stuff that they were kind of hard to to find. And so I wasn't gonna start trying to find any. I just thought that's all right. And and what these are are the um, the Arnie and Carlos um, Regia sock yarn. So I went in the yarn shop and they had all of them. They were just sitting there. <laughs> I thought, okay, these aren't so hard to find. Since I found them, I'll have to buy one. So I thought, okay, I'll buy a skein of it. Because, um, Reggie is not my favorite sock yarn. Um, Opal is my is my favorite. I do like that more, but these have a really pretty patterns on it. So I pulled out kind of three that I really, really liked. And then I couldn't decide which one to get. And I thought probably by the time I get a pair of socks in it and won't want to go back for another one, then they'll all be gone. Or, or at least the one that I want to go back for will be gone. So I got I got all three of them. So this is the the uh, Arnie and Carlos. And so they it comes out, it's a self-patterning here and it comes out and you know looking like Norwegian um, and so there's this one which is number 3655 and I bought this one which really looks like it looks um, kind of like rose mold colors this like my mom used to use this blue when she rose mold all the time with like the kind of the orangey red um, and this is number 3657. So there's that one. And then this one just looked fun and, and kind of bright and summery. And this is number 3654. And it's kind of, it's like orangey, kind of orange. It's, it's really like fun. And, and I have a lot of, of socks, um, from, all the years that I've knit them, but I don't really have any orange ones. So I thought, well, that looked fun. So I bought all three of these skeins. These were the three that I pulled out. Um, and I now I don't know which one to cast on first, <laughs> but um, they all look really fun to knit. And hopefully that I will like knit one and that I will um, like the Regia. I do like, I always liked how the Opal um, knit up a little better, but we'll see. Um, so that is my yarn kind of show and tell. And then I have another. So remember a couple weeks ago when I showed you the pretty shoes that I bought for my birthday that came and they were like very different look they look like they you were wearing two different pairs of shoes. Well, I sent those back and I got a replacement for them. Um, Cause so what happens is you have to, my, the shoes that I had had come from Seattle. So you had to send them back to Seattle, which took, you know, like a week. And the way that their um, sales are, are, internet sales are set up is if you buy it online it comes from one of the stores it doesn't come from like a warehouse or something but the store doesn't have any way to access your credit card number so when you send them back or if you send them back and you want a refund they have to call you to get your credit card number so I knew that was going to happen and so one night um, about 10 days ago I got the phone call from the Fluvog Seattle store and the, the guy who was calling, you know, said, oh, I'm you know, really sorry that these didn't work out. And I said, I, I am too. I loved them. I just, I know I just couldn't get past how different they are. And he's like, well, if you really liked them and they fit you, he's like, maybe I can find you a pair that, that you'll like better. And I said, well, I don't think there's many out there in my size. And so he looked it up and he's like, yeah, 
He's like, there's only one pair and it's in San Francisco. I went, well, you know, I said, I don't know that I want to take the chance. And he said, well, I can get you a picture. And so he's like, I'll just call him up and ask him to send a picture and I'll send it out to you. And then you can see if you like how they look, you can just get them sent to you. And otherwise, if you don't, I can do the refund. And I thought, what have I got to lose? So the next day, I get a picture and it was like they were my shoes. <laughs> I like immediately wrote back and I went, yes, 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 I want them. So then they were in San Francisco. And so he arranged for them to come. So then it took another week for them to come. So these arrived on um, Wednesday. So what I've decided is that these were not meant to be my birthday shoes. These were meant to be my cancerversary shoes, which is the anniversary of the um, day that I um, had surgery um, for ovarian cancer. So um, kind of in my head, that's when my survival time frame starts. So I saw on the picture, I saw this. I saw this little blue flower on the toe and it was just all over. It was like, I need that shoe with the little blue flower on the toe. It looks like a little forget-me-not. It's just, it just, oh, it just took my heart. So it's got the darker blue and it's got this kind of more um, tropical-y kind of leaf. In real life, it's actually maybe a little even brighter. It's kind of a chartreuse -y almost um, color. So then the rest of it looks like this. It's got that same really pretty, like, magenta e flower and then the heel has this really pretty pink flower that to me that flower looks like a plumeria and so they make me think of hawaii and then the side is the that so do you want to see the other one they match that they look like they go together they're not like perfectly like matchy matchy but I don't know that you'd really want them to look like that because then they don't look like, I mean, they were cut out by hand. And so, so this one has the blue on the, they were kind of reversed. It's got the like blue um, on there, but it's got that same kind of tropical -y leaf. Which one did I show you? And then this has got like the pink. And so even from the back, they look like they go. Oh, and this one has this really pretty kind of aqua kind of teal like flower on it too. I love them. So I was just, I could not believe when they came. So they have, to me, these feel like way more sort of tropical. These shoes need to go back. These shoes need to go to Hawaii at some point. <laughs> um, but they are like super fun. Um, they have a high heel, if you can see. I mean, that's a that's a that's a pretty high heel, um, but you don't feel like you're walking on a high heel at all, um, just because they're designed so well. Um, when your foot is in there, um, you know how like when you're wearing a pump, your foot kind of, and you're on a heel, like you'd be on a heel this high, your foot kind of wants to slide down to the bottom and you feel it right on the ball of your feet. Well, something about, you know, because this is cut up so high, <clears throat> it keeps your foot back so that your heel stays right over, you know, the heel of the shoe so that um, it's, they're like super comfortable. And I have a pretty high arch and the way this come up, comes up, when I first like ordered them, I was worried because I read um, some people said that um, like the vamp would buckle, um, but it does not at all. Not at all. They're super, super comfortable. So these are my favorite thing from this week. They've got the listen loudly, speak softly. I love them. And then I have more show and tell. Um, 
I can't even think if it was Thursday or Friday now, but I got a package in the mail. I was, wasn't expecting anything. And I got a bunch of thing of um, like vintage booklets from my friend Kim, who is Knit Country. Um, and she received these as part of, um, they belong to her grandmother. And I know she showed them on Instagram one, one, um, one day and I kind of went, Oh, how wonderful. So there's a, there's a sock one. And then there is this one, which is gloves. There's a few mittens in the back, but these like really pretty gloves. And it's been so much fun um, looking through. The price is 15 cents. Um, this one isn't dated, but there's a few crochet gloves and there's a few, um, um, like here's, you know, just like kind of a, like a stripey one. They're all knit very, there's several of them are knit flat. There is an argyle glove. Those are knit flat, but. So, um, I want to make some gloves out of here. The glove one, I was like squeed when I saw it. <coughs> and then she sent me this Threads um, magazine, and this is from December 1987, January 1998, because there's a big article on um, um, fitting gloves and how to measure your hand and, and everything. And in here, <clears throat> there is these gloves, which are just, it's not going to show, but the, the um, thumb gusset on it, there's a cable that runs the inside all the way down like this. It's so beautiful. So I have to like look up, It's this is an article by Deborah Newton, who um, had a really great um, designing book out back in this, you know, day, but this is a, it's a really, um, and there's the, Alice Starmore has an article in here about, um, Erin knitting this, cause that was the time frame when Erin, her, her Erin knitting book was coming out. And then there was this one, which has sweaters. And this book was from 1947 and it was so fun to look for. I'm going to try to get a couple of, of um, pictures, pull a couple of pictures up, but the styling and the, the, um, the women who are modeling just, it look, it all looks so elegant and, and beautiful, but I thought this sweater was really pretty. It's just kind of a simple cardigan, and then it has this, um, like two color cable just down the, um, the sleeve, which, um, I, I don't know what podcast I was watching, but somebody was talking about um, somebody like a kind of youngish um, designer who did something had, that had like an intarsia um, cable in it. Like 1947, they were doing it then. <laughs> um, they were probably doing it before then too. <laughs> but but like very sort of sweater girl looks and they all have kind of their, um, you know, very Joan, Joan Crawford with the big shoulder pads. All the sweaters call for actual um, shoulder pads, but just think, you know, just like really elegant and, and pretty. Um, I can't, there are, Sweaters. Oh, I thought this one was really, really pretty. It's called Sunburst. And it's got, it's not going to really show, I don't think, but it's like ribbed, um, but it just kind of radiates um, down. It's like a, as a rib with like a seed stitch in. And anyway, I just, they're, they're just so pretty so thank you thank you so much Kim it's been so much fun to look through I mean, look at this one just kind of so that was it was just such a treat I took time out from 
from uh, and this one this this one reminded me of like pictures that I have of my little mom when she was young her hair was kind of like that and um, she would have posed like that um, but that looks that just reminds me of her so much I just think well, look at the big shoulder pads and so anyway it was it's it's been fun looking through those in the evening and um, best you know so anyway that will be all that I have for you today um, I want to thank everybody so much for watching um, the podcast is found on iTunes and YouTube and you can also um, join the Ravelry group which is Friends of Heartland Knits and we would love to have you um, over there but until I see you next week from my heart to yours Happy knitting.